When Sanballat heard we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. In this story, Sanballat, Tobiah, and his buddies are symbols to us of the outward opposition that you and I are going to face whenever we set our hearts to change our lives for the better. The first thing I want you to see in this story is that there are two levels of opposition that will come at us in life. The first level is what we might call low heat, which is what they apply at first when Sanballat and his friends come at them. Second half of verse 1. What do we mean by low heat? Sanballat ridiculed the Jews in the presence of his associates. He said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore the wall? Will they finish in a day? Tobiah does the same thing. What they're building, a fox could come and knock it over. Mockery, ridicule, sarcasm. This is low heat. And my friends, you can expect to receive this, to be on the receiving end of low heat if you want to change your life for good or for God. You can count on it. I remember the first time I, I picked up running about 10 years ago, and I don't know why I did, but just a weird thing, but I did. And if, how many of you run or do any jogging? Used to, how many of you used to run, I should say? <laughs> but it's so weird. The first time I laced them up and I went running around the neighborhood, I felt so weird because I felt, I've never done this before, and I felt like I was kind of standing out and I could have swore I was seeing curtains pull back and people looking at him going, ah! And it was just that trying to keep me from, from doing this, like everyone's watching you. The first time you visit, how many of you are new, new to this church? I mean, this is like in the last few months. Raise your hand. You see, you haven't been in the building before. So isn't it weird that Tyler's new? He came a couple, couple weeks ago. It's, isn't it a little weird when you walk into a building for the first time? Yes? It takes a lot of courage to do this. And the first time you sit down, don't you feel like everybody's looking at you? And we had you raise your hand so that we could do that right now. Let's all turn and let's look at these new people. What are they doing here? Whenever you try and do something new that's different to better your life, that's, what, it, it's, that's low heat. And, it, and it, just, it just happens. And people, you know, people who know you're trying to lose weight will have little digs. Well, how's our biggest loser doing? You know, and just, and these are the people that like you. If, if they know you're trying to turn your, fina get your financial house in order, they'll come in and they'll say things, you know, like, still watching that little TV, huh? Don't you wish you had something a little better? And, uh, you know, you, you, you start going to church for the first time. I guarantee you, you, you try and, and, and you have never gone to church before. I guarantee you, you're going to hear from somebody you know or work with. Frank, you aren't becoming one of them there Jesus freaks, are you? Just this subtle, low-heat opposition to make you question yourself and feel, eh, should I be doing this? And you can count on it when it comes to your faith that, that this is going to, to happen. And if it doesn't come from people, you can count on it that it's going to come from the enemy who's going to do everything he can to stop you in your tracks. So how do you fight low-level opposition, ridicule, mockery? Notice in verse 4 how Nehemiah responds. He doesn't give Sanballat or Tobiah or Geshem the time of day. He doesn't even let them know that he's bothered by it. Instead, he takes any intimidation he feels and he directs it straight to God. Do you see that? He says, hear us, O God. He doesn't, he doesn't talk to them. Go straight to God. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. God, would you take care of this, please? It's like in Little League. You know, in Little League, what happens you, when you get up? What, what do the fielders do? When you're up to the plate, what, are the, what do the fielders usually do? Come on, let's do it. Hey, bada, bada, You're trying to intimidate you. Let's do it. Let's pretend I'm, a, I'm the Little League batter. I've just come in. Come on, give it to me. Now, now, d does, is, does the batter, like, throw it out of his bat and go, stop that. You guys aren't being nice. No, what do you do? You just focus. Come on, give it to me. That's what Nehemiah is doing. He's just focused on what he's doing. He's ignoring the opposition. He's not giving them the time of day. That's how you deal with it. You keep your eyes on the ball, you keep your eyes on God and what he's called you to do. 
This verse from Jude 18, I, lo I love it. And Jude is just one chapter long, so that's not a misprint. In the last days, there will be what? Scoffers. These are men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and don't have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in the most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. What do you do when people scoff and they mock and they ridicule? You keep on building. Build yourself up. You keep pursuing the life change that you're after. You don't skip a beat. You don't stop. And that's what Nehemiah and his fellow Jews did. And check out what happened in verse 6. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with half their heart. I'm just checking you again. Come on. With all their heart. They're tr tracking with Jeremiah 29, 13. Isn't that cool? This is what you and I need to do as well. 